I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I've not heard you speak. I thought you were Scottish. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> bro, you could have got away, you could have got away with being from Scotland, bro. Anyway. If you Agza, we would not have known. You have not, you have not been local, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I've had, I've definitely had to like go away to come back to feel more appreciated, I would say. Mm, nah, hey, for sure, for sure. Yeah. There's too much talent. There's too much talent in London. So much. There's so many players I've played with. I'm thinking, how are you like here? But is you know there's always one thing or another, like they just don't have a push themselves or their attitude or they haven't been in the in the right place at the right time. You know, some people just get them opportunities. Um but so sometimes you have to you actually have to leave where you're comfortable to do what you usually do to them people really like, oh, who's this guy? And in your head you're thinking, I've been doing this for a while, but now it's on a bigger stage that people can recognize. No, for sure. For sure. And you know what? That's a great that's a great way to start, you know. We haven't even got through the intros yet, but we're already yeah. talking we're already talking that talk. But um yeah. Let's 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 get this started. Let's get this started. Episode of Beyond the 92. I'm Jamal Firefield, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend Family Samni. Today we're joined by a new number nine in the league, a talisman for York City, the reigning top scorer of the Scottish Championship and player of the year. We welcome Dipo Akinyemi. Thanks for coming on, bro. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you the hustler. <laughs> Do you know why, yeah? Because you see the way you hustled your way, yeah, into this game, yeah? Like, I've, I've, I've done my research, yeah? Obviously, like, you always do your due diligence and you've had so many clubs and it's like you're finding a way, you're finding a way, like, to break. And, and you even just told us, like, before before the show started, didn't it, about how you're finding your way and it's now. But just tell us about that journey, man, like, and, like, what was the breakthrough moment for you? It was it was so tough. I mean, like I said, I've been like people look at my TV and they think I've been just this guy's been at so many clubs. Like, what the hell? I'm like, I just want to play games. I just want to play football. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, when I was at say so when I was at Stevenage, you know, when I joined, I was like, I joined as a youth team player with like maybe the last six months of a, of a YT. They saw me at Potter's Bar. I was playing the uh, 18s there on first team. I remember we played FA Youth Cup. Ended up being born with 3 0. Luke was the manager at the time of that 18s. So it was fuming. I'll never forget. He had them in the middle of the of the pitch shouting his. Was, oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did so well on the like, young coming up. And then um, I didn't get a pro. Then they asked me to come back in pre season. And, you know, they're like, you know, come back on yourself one. And that's exactly what I did. I just came back in pre-season, sharp, scoring goals with them and stuff like that. And uh, myself a pro. Started off well, played a few games, went on loan, come back. And then the manager at the time got sacked, Teddy Sherman. And then uh, Darren Sell took over, who's at Woking now. And then from them, I was just really on loan after that. Sent out on to different clubs, farmed out to. I was at Dulwich three times. Say Auburn's, so St. Neots, 
Bishop Stortford, Billy Ricky. This was all in the space of probably like two years. That's five clubs already in two years. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then I joined Dulwich permanently, got promoted with them to the to the to the south. Yeah, National League South got promoted to the National League South with them. Did a season with them. Scored about eighteen goals. I wasn't even on the a star properly. I was in and out. Do you know what I mean? So scored then, then you know them ones I'm thinking, you know, I think I've scored enough to like warrant myself maybe a higher move or something like that. Never happened. It's just loads of like loads of huffs and puffs. Loads of huffs and puffs. Went to Welling, then COVID happened, but then had a son in, in lockdown. And then I remember just sitting down with myself and I was up. Uh, was 106 kg. I remember stepping on the scale. I said, wow, I've fallen off. <laughs> hey, bro, I know the feeling, bro. Trust me. Wow. I said, lockdown. Yeah. I said, lockdown has done me. So, yeah. I said, yeah. so what's, what's, what's your playing weight? My playing weight is about no more than 92. Ooh. Really, so, really fell off. Yeah. So... Like, what, I was you doing, what was you doing in lockdown? Because I swear lockdown was all about fitness. Going the for first, the first lockdown was about fitness. The first okay. lockdown was about fitness. The second one, when they literally neutralized everything, and I was just sitting at home, I was like, I can't keep going outside, running and doing kickups with tissue, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then times I, I didn't even know what club I was at. Like, I didn't have a club technically, so I, I just end up going back to Wellington. I was there for two years. Well, three years all in, but two or two of the two of the years was locked down. Like the season just got locked off. So it's just like, obviously when I had my, my my kid, it's just like you're not you can't really go and you're being cautious. You're at home. She's pregnant during the whole thing, so whatever she's eating, you're eating. And you end up eating her leftovers, and then it just that's not your excuse. That's not an excuse. No, it's not an excuse. Not an excuse. It's, a, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> You get, you get, you actually get caught up. So then, um, yeah, no, season started with well and weren't doing too, weren't winning. I was, I even got to the point where I said, bro, I'm, I'm this big, I might as well just, you know, just be a top one. Knowing in myself that I'm a running kind of forward, I'm like, I just might as well. You see these pictures of you, 106 kg, you know? Because right now, yeah, you're built like a bull, like, <laughs> everything is tight. <laughs> You'll see a lot of it was like in my face. Like, if I could, let me just find this picture. I just have to show people. <laughs> when, they, when they see it, like how? Well, the, lockdown, the lockdown was tough on a lot of people. That was crazy. But one thing I have noticed though, Dipo, is everywhere you go, you score goals. Yeah. It seems, as though, it seems as though, as long as you're in and around the right areas, you're going to put the ball away. Is that something that you learn? Under Teddy Sheridan, did he give you any gems of advice while you was playing? Because let's be honest, he was one of the best as well and had a great. Day. No, I I, le I learned a lot from a lot of people, especially at the time. Him, firstly, he was like the first one who actually sat down, not sat down, but like in training, he would join him, and he was doing like crazy stuff. The guys, like I just can't remember how old is that type, but he was showing you how to volley. Head door, finish. I was just looking at it, like, wow, this guy can actually like, probably still play if he had the legs, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from general, like, watching players, older players play. Um, like, Matty Godden was at, was at Steven at the time. He's in the champ now. Scored loads of goals. Learned from him. Um, so you studied, is what is basically... Yeah, just like studying players at like players at the club, training like um forwards at the club, any club I've been to, or any time I've you know an established like Junior Morass, I played with him. Another one that said, I mean, always scores. Um, Where did you play with Junior? Say Albans. It's yeah. the year. It's the year we played Carlisle in the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. Junior, Junior was at Bromwood for a time. Um, a good friend of mine and family's. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He, like even him, like he's been up and down. He's had to come all the way back down to go back up and stuff like that. So 
Yeah, no, like, I mean, I've always, I feel like I've always had the, the eye for scoring as well. Um, I think it's just a natural instinct kind of thing. Uh, so one thing I will say is that you play with, like, a hunger and a desire, man. And it's like, yeah, it's very hard to ignore and it's very hard to not admire if I'm being honest with you, like looking at you on the pitch, it was like, wow, this guy is really, really hungry. And yeah. and, and, and I love I love that about you when I played against you a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just want to know, yeah, regarding like your move to Scotland. Yeah. So obviously you spoke about lockdown and you didn't know what the next step was and whatnot. Yeah. How did how did that come about? Um, so that that welling season, like I said, I got myself, I think yeah, Peter Taylor took over welling. And I remember he saw me, he looked at me and said, you're not going to play until you get yourself fit. And at that time, I said, wow, am I really getting bombed off at Welling? Man? No no offence to Welling. Like, I love that club. But I was like, I can't not be a starter for Welling if I'm going to push on. So I remember I just you know, I got myself right. I was, mate, I was living in West London at that time. I was cycling from West to training in Welling. In the wow. morning. Like, stuff like that. I was... Get my, you know, my fitness right, eating right. And I dropped all the way down to, from 106, I dropped all the way down to 88. And then we played, we played Chippenham. That's the game like Kefford said, you know, he come off the bench, I scored. Then from that game, the run was just happening. From Christmas on, I think I scored, I scored about 15 goals from January to the end of the season. That season, just firing, running, 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 doing my thing. And then the end of the season came. And, like, I had a few options. Um, I had uh, a few National League options. But do you know them ones where I think because the National League now is much bigger and more financially better than it was before. I mean, a lot of clubs can easily just go and get League 2 players if they want at the time. So... A lot of, if I was going there, I would have been second, third choice to some of the people that are in these teams and stuff like that. Or like even like financially, like numbers weren't looking right for for the situation I was in. But most most importantly, I was looking for uh, full time football. So if it wasn't full time football, I wasn't interested. I said, listen, I need to be training every day. I'm not. I didn't do all of this to not train every day. I need to be in that sort of cycle. So. Um, yeah, United came out, came on the radar. Um, obviously, it was a big thing. I remember sitting down with like, Mrs. and that, Zach, like, we could be going to Scotland. She said, huh? Scotland? I said, yeah, man, like, you're going to have to do the sacrifice for me. Yeah, please. Like, yeah. Oh, so you took, you took the missus with you? Yeah, yeah, I took her I took her up as well. I took her up in the little one. It was, it was like, the first few months, all right, but then she started to struggle. Or just like the distance and that. Have you have you seen the David Beckham documentary? I know. I need to though. I need to. It's very good. It's very good. Victoria speaks on um, his wife of Victoria Beckham. She speaks on having to follow him around. Then yeah, yeah. No, it's it, no, it's tough. It's tough. Like she's literally just had to pack up her life and just follow me to Scotland. Like I always say, imagine like I didn't do well. And then I've just packed her up. Like she she's got her own business, a very good business she runs. She she does like weeks and stuff though. Um, so she makes actually pretty good money from that. And she's literally had to just cut that in half or pause it for a bit for me. I think that is one of the um things that a lot of people forget that sometimes when you move a player, you're not only moving a player, you're moving a family. So yeah. that's nurseries, that's a different way of living because you're in a different city. There's so much to think about, and it's no surprise that a lot of players don't like um, moving to Scotland. But in that in that Scotland move, you did really well. Yeah. As I said, as I said in the start, you was a Championship Player of the Season, top goal scorer as well. What made you come back to England and and ultimately sign for York City, a club that me and Femi was played for? To be fair, I played for Potters Bar and Welling as well, so yeah. we, we tread them the same path. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the back of my mind, going to Scotland 
was I just like I said, I just need to get out of England. Go somewhere. It's not I don't know, it's close to the top league. Like if you look when when you speak to other people, to them I played in the second tier of champ I mean second tier of Scotland, which is the second best league in Scotland. I mean it's like if you think about it, it's like playing for the championship in England. But it's obviously the levels is completely different. But to the outside world, I'm the best player in the Scottish champ. It's as simple as that. So it's like I wanted to go there, make a name for myself, hopefully go to the Prem. If not, come back to England. That was the that was the only two options. But at the same time, you have to think of and the family's still going to be comfortable in Scotland and stuff like that. So obviously come after having all of those chats and stuff like that with the best, I was like, obviously come back to England. It's probably a priority. Um I'd have, at the time I had a few like EFL clubs interested, but I like a lot of them didn't want to pay the fee. That was <laughs> as you know, <laughs> funny, yeah. They didn't want to pay the price tag, but just, you know, sorry, sorry different, yeah. I'm just trying to picture, yeah, you telling your missus, yeah. Yeah, we're going back to England and you get in the car and you drive an hour and a half down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Is that... York! <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, York, is, York is about two hours, maybe one one hour 50 on the train straight to King's Cross. So mm-hmm. is it too bad? Um, But like, I had interest from Carlisle. <laughs> where I was living, I was living, living in Motherwell is like maybe forty five minutes from Motherwell, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, they're League One. In my head, I'm thinking League One. Like, I could be playing League One, but I'm not really changing the location of where I'm living. Like this is, it's just as bad. Like imagine saying to people, "Oh, you know, you're homesick, or your your family's homesick, and then you move one hour down the road." Like they look at you like, oh, who is this guy? This guy's a donut. But yeah, no, I had I had a few, I had like, I, like, I had a few interests and stuff like that. I think most people will know like I like places, teams like Gillingham. Um, I had interest from Warsaw as well, but at the time, like, they just couldn't come to agreement with with a, with a transfer fee, and then York came out of nowhere and just said, "Listen, we want it." One thing about York, they're gonna pay that money. One thing about you, if they want you, if they want you, he just said, "Here's the money. Let's have him." Like, is is no installments, not just uh, yeah, straight. That's what I love. Do you know what? That is one of the one things I, I did love when I was at York is they're not here to play a game. If they want, if they're serious about something, they're gonna go out and get it. It's no, it's no dancing it's, around it. Yeah, like it, I remember, I remember speaking to Stocky called me. He's like, "Listen." Clubs obviously going in a new direction, you know, new owners and stuff like that. Sorry, who's stopping? David Stockdale. Okay, okay. He's obviously he's he does like some of the recruiting as well. Yeah, like I remember him calling me. It's like you know, like the chairman really wants you. Like he's been talking about you for like the past couple of days, weeks. Like he said he's looked at your videos. Like, like would you be interested? Hmm. I said, you know what, like. Yeah, I want to go somewhere where I'm, I've always said to myself, go somewhere where you're wanted and loved. You know what I mean? Like, don't just go somewhere because, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to be, people are telling me you're going to be in contention. Like, with, with other strikers, like, I mean, there's always competition, but you know in the back of your head, you're going to be number one when you're fit. Do you know what I mean? That's that's it. So, just thought, yeah, York, like, I mean, I looked at the stadium and stuff like that, the stadium. Training ground, training on grass. Like last year, I was training on like 3G and stuff like that. So those are all like the good stuff. But yeah, and it and it seems to be paying off because looking at your stats is 15 games, eight goals, six assists. Am I correct? Yeah. All right, and that yeah. So you've you've hit the ground running as well. Um, and I just want to touch on your game yesterday. Obviously, yeah. last minute equaliser um, from Bromley. Yeah. Obviously scored again. To be honest, when I saw you play, and then I realised that you guys had Linnell as well, Linnell John Lewis, yeah. I thought they just got a carbon copy of two of the same people. 
no one's gonna want to play against fast, strong, quick players. So when I said when I was injured, I said to Femi, like that's gonna be a crazy battle, and you're gonna love it. Yeah. Did you, you, you I know you enjoyed that battle, Femi. No, do you know what? I was I was um left back of that day, innit? Yeah, he was, he was, he was. I didn't really get to I didn't really get to taste taste dips no. still. <laughs> <laughs> he was watching from afar thinking I want yeah. to be I was such a proper public and, oh, man, I want some of that, you know. But um, no, he looked good, he looked good. So tell us, so tell us about that, that game, um, Dippo. How did how did you see it? Because obviously, you're in 17th, probably not where you want to be, similar to Wormwood in our situation, but you played against a, a good Bromley team. Yeah, yeah. So what, did, what was your thoughts from that? Um, I think first half... I don't know. I don't think it was a great game all in all. I think it was a lot like they had, I think first off, they had one one shot. Or we had one shot. But I obviously scored mine. But it was like a very energetic game, like back and forth. Probably a bit more direct. Obviously, they play off Cheek. Very good at what he does. If you, like, if we'll see in the chain, like if you told us three, four weeks ago that we wouldn't draw with Bromley. We weren't sitting in the thing, sitting in playoffs right now. You'd probably say, yeah, I'll probably take it. But I think it was definitely two points dropped. The fact we had probably like one minute left of the game. But if you look at the whole game all in all, it's probably a draw. You touched on there about if you said uh, a couple of months back, you'd draw with them, you'd, you would have taken it. Is that down to Neil Ardley coming in? How, how good has he been for you guys? He's been very good. He's been very good with what he, his demands are. I mean, he's literally like got his hands in everything, trying to sort out loads of stuff. We've got so many players and we're so understaffed. I think everyone knows that. He says it in his interviews as well. Like, he just wants us to play. I mean, the last few games, I don't think we've had the opportunity to play the way he wants to. I mean, we've got we've had a few injuries and stuff like that, and plus now, but it will come good. Like we, was it we? How many? We've got quite a few points under him already, and we scored two goals a game under him as well. So definitely, agree, for sure, for sure, um, it's evident that you know Ali has come in and he's he's doing the business in it, and since he's coming, you guys are putting a string of results together and whatnot. Yeah. Um, what went wrong? With like in terms of your start to the season, like obviously you've signed for club and and it was almost like you know you know like NBA, yeah. You know when you you, you see like a big players now joined like a James Harden or yeah. you, it, it almost when 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 we saw Dipper Akanyemi sign for York City, it was almost like James Harden signed for. It was one of those moments, isn't it? You know, and then they then they. Collected Callum Howe and then they collected um Tyler Cordner. Uh, Tyler Cordner. Tyler Cordner. Then they collected Tyler Cordner, you know. So it was like, okay, they're putting a they're putting a team together and they're gonna be competing, you know. So you've probably gone into that or had the preseason, gone into the season thinking you you guys are gonna be up there, right? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what went wrong, right? I don't even know. Like even trying to think back to the first few games, like there's some games we probably we I remember we were winning and then we end up drawing. We we'll just lose last minute. Willstone, we lost two. We were winning from a winning position. We played Ultinum. We were winning two one. End up drawing. Like we we're just dropping points. We drew like three and lost four, or something like that. Does that does that do something to your mental when you're in a game and you're winning and then you end up losing? You go into the next game thinking, oh yeah, we're one 0 up. Is there something in the back of your mind thinking? Oh, we're probably going to do what we did last week and and lose this game or draw this game. Is that is that belief sucked from you? Um, I don't know. I don't know about everyone else, but I always think there's there's a chance. There's always a chance. I always think, even with me, like if I see five minutes left, I can score in these five minutes somehow. Like, just get me the ball close enough to the goal. Okay. Let me do the the, the business, and I'll fire away. I always go into games. I'm going to score today. There's not a game I I I put on a shirt and I think I'm not going to score. Not a single game. If not score, assist. If not assist, 
make the pass for someone else to assist. Like, you have to be, like, I always feel like I have to be involved or create some, like, that's that's always how I felt, it's especially after last season with, with the, the goals and assists I got last season. I just feel like nowadays you have to be involved in some some capacity of of attack and play or or creating goals. So I think it was it was it was a frustrating time at the at the beginning, but I think now like we're starting to pick up points and especially against like the bigger teams as well. Like starting to pick up some some decent points now. So I think we just need to I think once we get on the a good run and we power through and we get fitter, then I think we'll, we'll definitely, hopefully push up. I love I love your mindset there about being involved and wanting to put the numbers up. And talking about um, the big games, uh, we had a big one yesterday against the team that are top of the table currently. Jessica. Jessica beat us 2-0 yesterday. Liam Mandeville and Joe Quigley scoring. Femi, how did you see that game? What was your thoughts on Chesterfield and the performance of Wormwood? Yeah, first and foremost, is playing that game is no surprise why Chesterfield are top of the league. To be honest, they have got a um, very good squad and they have got strength and depth. So that's the first thing I noticed. Um, they had the starting 11, but then they had Oli Banks, Michael Jacobs. Joe quickly check off on the bench and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you guys have got a real squad because these guys can start any any day for them. You know? Um with 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 that being said, I did feel like, yeah, like we sustained. Like, do you know what I mean? We held it down. Uh, we sustained what they had. And they were they had a couple of chances, but we limited, we limited them. I feel like we limited them. And I feel like we took it to them in spells as well. Um, but well, like I said, when you got a squad like that, and there's goals all over the park. If you look at Chesterfield's, uh, the top goal scorers on five goals, which is Joe Quigley, that got his fifth yesterday. Uh, so, so when you've got goals all over the park, can come from anywhere, you know, and and that's literally what happened, didn't it? You know, like they they they, they hit us with the one. One goal, um, Liam Mandeville in the first half and then Joe Quigley in the second half. But um, performance-wise, I do feel like we've done okay. I feel like it's, it's two moments um, that's killed us, you know. Um, yeah, we've we got, we got to roll our sleeves up and go again and we just need to find the consistency. Obviously, we beat Arnipal during the week, uh, which was a good performance. And now we just need to maintain that level. I totally, I totally agree with him. And one thing I'll say about this show is I love doing it. But coming on here after the loss is so tough. It's so <laughs> tough. I've got to face up to the reality of we're not doing what we set out to do. Yeah. And that's and that's painful, especially when a lot for a long for a long period I was out for a while and I came back in the last two games. And even that being involved back involved is great, but then it's like, okay. We lost the game, and you start thinking about what you could have done better. And you know, when you know, I eats away at you—the little mistakes you make during the game—and you forget about the good things because it's all about as a defender. You make one mistake, and you get punished. And I think that's been our our um, downfall—the little mistakes that we make at the vital moments. That yeah. good times are punishing. Um, so it's really tough to to put it into words sometimes, but I suppose it's kind of therapeutic when you start talking about the game and you can analyse it as well instead of analyse it with friends and guests instead of just analyse it in your own mind, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Femi summed it up perfectly there. Um, and going on to some of the other games, the 16th place, actually lost to 8th place, um, Halifax, Adam Cena and Aaron Cosgrave with their goals. Um, Fleet are in a tough one. I'm mean, losing four from five. Yeah, we played Fleet a couple of weeks back, and they hit us with a sucker punch as well. Probably put on a better performance than us on the day, but again, mistakes costing us. Femi, what did you see from that? I see that Halifax are picking up from where they left off last year, and maybe getting back into a bit of more of a rhythm. What did you think? 
Yeah, uh, Mighty Facts, they're always, they're always like a club that's um, one of the, what it's like, how do you explain it? Dark horses. Y yeah, they're not only dark horses, but it's also like, national, when, you, when you come to the National League, Halifax is like frontliners, like for, for in my opinion, like frontliners for it's a typical National League game. That's the best way to explain it, isn't it? It's like you want to know what the National League is like, go Halifax. Go and experience that. And if you come on the other side, yeah, then you're built for this division, isn't it? It's one of those. So, so so with this Halifax result, like obviously, we all know they're a tough team, they're a tough team to play in it. And and um, F3 are good. They play. They 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 play good football. But like I said, with Halifax, they've been in this division. They know the division in it really well. So going over there, coming down south, picking up three points. Um, not really surprised if I'm being honest with you because they've always they always put good squads together. They always put robust squads together and whatnot. So, yeah. Sure. Um, Solihull. First loss of the season. Dipo. Yeah. All the shot hand. That L. Have you what have you seen from um Solihull this season? And obviously all the shot are on a, a little resurgence at the moment. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts on that game. When we played when we played Solihull, I could understand why like they are where they are. They just limit mistakes. And I mean, if they have a chance, they'll punish you. Um very Put to, well put together team considering the amount of players they have lost in the summer um, yeah, all in all there was a very good team like all in all it's a very good team same with Aldershot we played Aldershot earlier in the season they, that, they are they are very um, regimented in what they do for sure, for yeah. sure. is it a surprise for you to see them lose though? Huh? is it a surprise for you to see them lose? I mean, the L was gonna. Someone's you can't. I mean, this league is everyone like on their day can get handed something. Do you know what I mean? So, the fact that they've gone that long without being without losing is is a credit to them. But yeah, if if someone goes unbeaten in this league, Jesus, and they, they they've done something right. They've done something massively right. But yeah, on like on their day, you can get handed a reality check. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point actually, especially with the next team that we're going to talk about, which is Gates and Altrincham. Um, Justin Lumzo and um, Donoa popped up with two goals, and they beat a good Gates head team who, let's be honest, have lit the league on a light. What they've been able to do this season has been nothing short of amazing. But five wins on the bounce for Altrincham, so that was never going to be an easy game. But you don't expect that from a team at home. So it's surprising to see that. But I think what Gates have done really well is they've got that family vibe around the club. And it seems as though it won't be long before we see them back to their to their absolute best. We had Ian Watson on here um, a couple of weeks back and he spoke about what they do and how they do it and the reason why they're so successful. So it's no doubt that that's just probably a blip in the road. Um, and Hartlepool for me beat easily 3-1. Yeah. There's a really back up with the goals, seven for the um, eight for the season. Dippo, do you do you see do you watch other strikers or do you just concentrate on yourself? I don't watch anyone else. Yeah? Just 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 about you. Their puff is their puff. My puff is my puff. I mean, like I see people people pop up a score. You know the regular people, like if you're if bad goals, you bad goals, you've always been in and around. There's a respect, do you know what I mean? I saw Michael Cheek yesterday. Just said to him, keep scoring goals. I said, keep scoring goals. That is it. Like, I think that's just strikers. The same with, I think who's Marcus. Marcus is scoring goals. I remember he was at um, he was at Dartford, just before I went to to air. I remember he used to say to, he used to say to Oli like, Oli used to call me that. Like, What's the been doing? Oli, Oli just telling him that guy's been, he's a monster. Like, <laughs> his work great. What he's doing now is just a monster. So, but yeah, no, nah, another one that's up there with, like, it's no surprise he scored goals. I've seen, like, he always, he always scored goals. Another one who, who else is in that, in and around it? Uh, Ebsfleet's 
number four. Don Polian, Don Polian, Nick Kabamba. I feel like these these are these are these are names that are always going to be in and around scoring goals because that is what they do. So like you're the new kid on the block trying to knock on the door, trying to get in the club, and they're like, "Nah, you got you got to keep grinding before you get." <laughs> I love, I, love seeing, I love seeing people shine. Yeah, you're definitely the new kid on the block. I'm a new to the block, but I, I think there's also a respect. I think there's a respect level of people know that school goes. So it's it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. Like I think someone's asking me, like, oh, are you going for top goal score? I said, I'm going to have to do. Um, if I get top score in this league after, with, with, the, with the strikers that are in this league, then done something very, very good. Very and, good. And there's some new strikers in the league as well. Gary Hooper, who's had a fantastic career, is now signed for Barnet. Um, and Southend also brought in Daniel Carnu and yeah. Olifela Oloma. He's at Bromley as well from Willstone. So I really like strikers, Femi, the the strikers this league in this league this season, they're really scoring a goal. Now, I don't know if they've up their game or defenders have maybe fallen off a bit. They are defending, but it seems as though if you want to have a successful season off the back of Notts County and Wrexham, strikers are the way to go about it for me. What do you, what do you think about that? Most definitely. Um, having a goal scorer in the team is, is golden, man. It's like, it's like a dream. Especially being a defender, you know, um, knowing that you're holding down the fort or you were losing 1-0 or we're trying to get back in the game and you know you've got that out there. I would actually pay for that. And I always say, if I can, if someone can guarantee me 30 goals, I'll give up some of my wages for that person. I promise you that. Because I know how important it is, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you know. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like you definitely need Someone that someone that scores goals is is so important. It gives you a chance of winning the game, you know. And and that's what I think that's the formula this season. Yeah, a lot of teams now have got have got goal scorers, you know. And not only a lot of teams. Credit to the players as well because you look at the likes of like Paul McCallum. You know, um, he's been in this division for time, but he's hit. He he's hit. He's hit form. He's took it back to the essence. You know what I mean. I recall well as well, you know. So these players, they've been in division for time, but um, it's been it's been their best season thus far, or or they they're bringing it back. So yeah, like that's definitely the formula going forward. Oh, and another striker doing good things. Amari Morgan Smith popped up a late late winner against Wolverhampton for Kidderminster, and that's two got um, wins on a the bounce for Kiddy. They did really well to get a win there, and that'll that'll put a lot of wind in their sails for the upcoming seasons. Um, I want to talk to you about Rochdale, um, Dippo. Obviously, they're one of the favourites. Yeah. Harrison and Tyson Clare, both up to eight and six goals, respectively. But they went to a tough place, which is Maidenhead, and yeah. they drew. Maidenhead haven't won since um, August. Maidenhead won since August. They haven't won a game since August. So how did you see the uh, Maidenhead-Rochdale game? What are you expecting from Rochdale? Rochdale. I'm expecting Rochdale to be top four. I don't, well, that's what I expect. They're probably their targets probably personally are probably to try and win the league, but they they will be in and around it. They've got some very very good players. We play when we play them. I mean, we we lost we lost four one or something like that three one, but it was like well drilled team. I mean, some of them, like, then a lot of players in this league, a lot of should be playing EFL, let's be honest. But they're obviously where they are. But they'll be in and around it, 100%. I'll be surprised if they're not. Maidenhead will always come around. Somehow they always come around. They either survive or they'll just find some sort of formula. But... That's for sure. The survivors for sure. <laughs> yeah, they always come around. The survivors, my the survivors. And uh, Femi, what about what about the Oxford file game? Now, I think it's a bit early to call game six pointers, depending on who you talk to. But they were twentieth of Oxford, and 
obviously fouled at the bottom of the league. Oxford came out on top in that game, beating them 3 0. Josh Parker up to six goals for the season. Um, Oliver Sanderson scored a brace as well. Talk to me about that game, Femi. What did you see? How did you see that one pan out? Yeah, it was definitely a massive game for both clubs, you know. Um, they both they both play they both both teams play an attractive style of football. Uh, I feel like Oxford, um, them with them being at home is a massive advantage. With, with the three G pitch and whatnot, and they and I can imagine them using that as an advantage, you know. Um, they've got an experienced striker in Josh Parker. Um, I saw a foul in Omateo as well, you know. But it just seems that Oxford managed to win that fight on the day, on the day, you know. And fouls are going through a rough period as well, um, a rough, rough period. And we had Aaron McLean on a couple, a couple weeks ago, and he 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 felt like they were going to struggle this season. He fouled. Yeah, fouled. He felt like they were going to struggle this season, and. Since then, it's, his words have been congruent, you know. Um, mm. they, have, they, haven't, they, have, they haven't had the best run and whatnot. And, yeah, it's just hard. It's gonna. It's difficult for them to, to get out of this right now. It's difficult, you know. We, it's too early to call who's going up, who's going down or whatever. But they need to definitely put, put some results together. That's what I can say. No, for sure, for sure. And when... It's, it's definitely tough. Especially when, when you're in that mode, because I think when you've got a team like that, when you're bottom of the league, it's like, okay, do we keep holding this team? Because I think you start thinking about next season. If you're bottom of the league after 15 games and you don't really see a way out, you start thinking, okay, what kind of players am I going to keep? What kind of players are not at the level? How are we going to get back to this level? Um, and I suppose that's where contracts come in. Um, and I think that's a perfect time to ask you this question, Dipper. Have you signed that long contract that uh, was that came out somehow on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> what the what the ten year contract that everyone keeps talking about? No. Femi, do you remember? Do you remember the the viral WhatsApp message that went out? And <laughs> I, I don't know how it went. Out. I think it was between Dippo and he's either agent or he's he's the chairman. chairman. Chairman, there was a chairman. There was a chairman. First of all, how did that come out? For those of you who don't know. If you don't mind me explaining it, Dipper. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and one part was, let me read it here. We're going to build a statue when we go to the champ. And then, as all footballers should do, renegotiate term was a reply from Dipper with the eyes and the laughing faces. Yeah. <laughs> he said, obviously, we can do something. He said, let's get that long contract sorted out. Has it been done? And how did that message even find its way onto it? <laughs> nah, um... I think I, I've got a good relationship with Matt. So, like, it's just, like, I message him after games and stuff like that. It's banner anyway. Um, Are you one of those? Are you one of those guys, yeah? Mission the, uh, mission do you know what it is, yeah? Do you know what it is? Hey, hey, like, hey. Not to explain it. It's like, I think he probably sees it as, you know, I've, this is someone I've paid for. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there will be a, de a good enough or decent relationship between you know, someone that he pays for and, you know, the guy that's scoring goals for you, do you know what I mean? So, it's, it's just, I don't know, I think I think the fact that, obviously, Matt is probably one of the youngest um, owners about, he, you can easily chat to him, do you know what I mean? Like, he, sometimes when you pop to the training ground, he's shaking hands and chatting to all the boys, so I'm probably not the only one he speaks to, but, you know, he went. How did it manage to get on the net, though? That's what I was wondering. Was it an accident? Was it a slip of the I finger? I think he posted it. He posted it, yeah. But oh. do you know, what I mean? he's the owner. He can do what he wants. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, of course. <laughs> and, 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 and how old is Matt? So just for it's twenty nine. So he's an owner of a football club at twenty nine years old. He's he's sound, man. He's sound. He's sound. He, he can like, you see, he really cares cares about the club. He cares about players. So we was checking up on, on people and stuff like that. So it's the second time I've probably had this close of a relationship with, with, with a chairman. And I think, um, obviously, York is a club that we've all played for, my yeah. shirts. I had, I had a great time there. And Jason McGill was, it's quite similar, to be fair. He would always check in, 
especially with the boys that will come from London, because you knew how far it might have been. Um, and I think York's a, a special club, and I think it needed somebody who cared as much as the fans do. So I think I think the, the whispers from a lot of the fans have been they're quite content with the direction the club is now going after a lot of um, unstableness that was uh, surrounding the club. But I had a I had a beautiful time at at York with Paddy. To be fair, who's who's yeah. still. Um, He's still, here. still here. Legend, the legend Paddy. Um, um, as I said, Femi's played there as well. So it's a club that it's a club that holds the torrid. Say that again, Fem. I'm the Pips. I had a torrid. No, I <laughs> had a torrid time. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Now we've got Dips. Now we've got Dips on here. I think it'd be a good time to even talk a little bit about you and, and your time there. Obviously, it didn't go to plan, but what did you learn about yourself in that time? What did you experience from the city? I learned, I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of things. First and foremost, like, Dips, what's happened to you this season is, is um, regarding the management, is no surprise. I got signed by a manager and a couple months in, a couple games into the season, he left and a new manager came in. Um, and it's like deja vu, you know. It's 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 different, yeah, but same same things happening at the club, isn't it? But I just felt I just felt like I just felt like uh, it wasn't stability when I was there. There wasn't any stability, and and we were in League Two at the time. Um, we ended up getting relegated in my second season to the National League. Um, like Jamal said, Jason McGill, he was brilliant. He was brilliant, you know. Um, but we brought in um, a manager called Jackie McNamara in the second season, and I wasn't. I wasn't. Too, if I'm being honest with you, I wasn't too sure about him. I wasn't too sure about him. I felt like he got he got put in the deep end, and he didn't really he didn't really know what to what to do. He, he didn't really do his due diligence on players as well. That's what I will say. So a lot of players were coming in the building. They will play one game, then they won't play again because they're not cutting it. And it was just like, it was like a circus, if I'm being honest with you, you know, and, and yeah, like it's not, it's not surprising that we, we got, we got relegated from the league. So my experience wasn't great. I think my first year was okay. But my second year, it was it was it wasn't a great year. It did leave a bad taste in my mouth. But like fast forward now, um, it's always been a big club, you know, and it's always had the potential. I was just there at a bad time, bro, and and I'm glad that you're reaping the benefits of it. Jamal's reaped the benefits of it, you know. Everyone has their own time at that club, but I'm glad that you you guys have. You know, I didn't I didn't actually realize how big of a club it was. I was I was very um I, th I think I was very wet behind the ears when I was young so I didn't really know of many clubs that were outside London so yeah when, when it came to oh yeah you're going to York and you're going to Booth and Crescent like walking into that stadium I wish you would have played there because I'm sure the LNAR stadium is beautiful but Booth yeah. was under the lights on a Tuesday Booth was crazy oh, under the lights with in the long hair stand with the flags going and. The noise they would generate, like the place would shake, and it was old. It was like proper old school stadium football, like history. You didn't want to go. You, some played teams oh, got York on a Tuesday. Damn it! It was. It was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was about, wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was crazy, and it was an amazing place to be, especially the time I was there with winning promotion and winning the FA Trophy in this in a, a week later. It was yeah. amazing. So I really. York hold a special place in my heart, and it's, it's somewhere that I love playing. Um, it's just it's just a shame that they had to leave, but I totally understand why they did. Well, Booth and Crescent. Yeah. Why, why did they? I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't I think they, they wanted to expand, and that's that stadium's been in the works since I was there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I live I live around the corner. They put me in a house um, with who was that? I was with Andre Bucard. That's the house they put everyone in just to bed them in, and it was like past. It was just right next to the um the chip shop and the little Sainsbury's and the. It was a crazy. I'm looking at the house like this is mad. Like I've never. It was that like Coronation Street. That's the best way I could explain it. In the nicest way I could explain it. 
but yeah, amazing, amazing place, amazing place. It's a nice, nice little town as well. If I'm being honest, it's nice. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And like everywhere, I would go and walk on my days off. I go and walk around. So if you get a chance, if go on your one of your days off. I think it's Betty's. They still got the Betty's there. The tea room in the in the town. I haven't actually walked around the town properly. I'm gonna have to soon. Probably put on a cap. Take Paddy with you. Take Paddy with you. He, he'll get all the he'll get all the the fans coming to you. You can just slip by and. <laughs> what um, but yeah, back back to the back to the games. Southend beat working two 0 Cardwell with his eleventh goal. Gus Scott Morris scoring as well. So yeah, they reached an agreement to sell. Woken up <laughs> solid owners, um, and hopefully it can start coming back up the league. Femi, what did you see from um, Southend and their recent happenings? Hey, what a way to celebrate! What a way to celebrate! You know. Um, they finally reach an agreement to sell the club. They go out there, go travel to Woking and get a result. And um, like I said, when we had Wes on the show, I feel like uh, we always know how that's going to end. That story's going to end. And there was a moment. But at that moment brought everyone in that team together. You know, and they're gonna they're gonna really wanna they're gonna really be motivated right now to just take on the world. Mm. They're, they're gonna be on it. And they're all together now. They're all close to Nick Root. And how Ricardo was flying the flag. You know, he got his 11th goal of the season yesterday. And he's having a very prolific season. Um, he's always been a really, really, really good player. Like, player, like, pound for pound, I would say he is one of the best strikers in this division, you know. And last season, the only thing that he lacked was the goals. You know, but playing against him, he's a really good player. Um, now he's added that to his game, the goals. It's like wow, like, we, and we haven't played Southend yet, so I'm really interested to see. You know, because yeah, and like I said, 11, eleven goals, eleven goals at this stage of the season is is no joke, man. So credit to Southend, and, and I'm happy that they finally sold the club as well. For sure, for sure. I think that's a great um, analysis of that film. Um, and daggers talking about strikers any FM's been clear to play yeah so congrats to him welcome back they drew 1-1 with Oldham Josh Reese popping up with a goal and James Norwood with his fifth Dipper what do you see from Oldham and how do you expect those guys to finish in this table this season another big club mm -hmm. with some serious firepower behind them Strikers they go over there, speaks for itself. When you think about the teams that in this league right now, the amount of big football clubs are in this league. I mean, last year you had you know you had Knox Wrexham, but I think it's like it, it feels like it's spread a bit more. You've got Chesterfield, you've got Oldham, you've got Rochdale, Barnet, all of these clubs that I'm talking about when I growing up playing football were all EFO clubs. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. It just it even just feels weird. Another one, Oldham, you'd think they're gonna be in and around it in the playoffs or fighting for proper Russian. I think it's very harsh that there's only two go up for the Oh, we we'd be here all day if we spoke. <laughs> about, we, it's, we, it's, we spoke I spoke about it in the week with Adam Summerton, who's the he's the commentator for all the TNT games. Yeah. He has a lot of arguments on Twitter about whether we should, and everyone is in agreement with him that we should. It's just that the powers that be, what's going to happen is me and Femi are going to retire, and then they're going to do, they're going to change the rule. That's what's going to happen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking about speaking about Dagenham, I want to talk about Dan Batty Dipper. Oh, <laughs> about about the the, the... Sorry, and for the list and for the viewers and listeners that haven't seen it, please go and watch. York City's footage of Dan Bay on a free kick in the dying minutes of the game. He kicked the ball. He had a free kick in the middle of the pitch. Last minute of the game. So, okay, you might want to play for time. He literally kicked the ball out of Dagenham. Over yeah. the stand. Into the, in, onto the A13, it seemed like. Yeah. What, what was that? When, I, when he done it, I was so confused. And then <laughs> I think... I really, I think there's a what's it? The rule in the national league is one ball in, one ball out, basically, isn't it? So you can't really have 
balls on the side. Multi ball, yeah, multi ball. Yeah, so he says, I'm just gonna show this at the stadium. <laughs> he just shelled it. Like, I just saw the ball. Like, do you know when you think he's gonna just kick off? I just saw the ball go over the stadium. Says, "Wow, all right." So I was like, that's the new wasting time tactic, I think. So if you if you're at a small ground, <laughs> in the dying minutes, <laughs> kick the ball out of the stadium, so they have to go and get a new one. But my thing is, the balls are with the liner anyway, so it's not yeah. that hard to just kick another yeah. ball in. I don't know. But hey, but hey, it was it, it made for good footage. It made for good yeah. footage. Yeah. I, th- I thought we might have lost a bet or something, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we're going on to the last game. The strange, those are the sort of strange things you yeah. think. There's something, there's something behind that. But yeah, he just, he just decided he's going to kick it out of the stadium. So that's that's crazy. That's funny. But the last game, Dawkins with their first live home game on the box mm. went two 0 up against Barnett, who are going really well this season. Josh Taylor and Jason Pryor. Jason Pryor scoring his seventh goal of the season. But they came back, Barney. Away from home, on 3G, two goals down. Kabamba with his 11th. Harrington and that centre-half, Collins, who's moving like a centre-forward these days. Mm. Four wins and abouts for Barnet. How did you see those two games, Femi and Dips? Oh, Dawkins and Barnet. Do you know what? I was watching the game and Barnet started off crazy slow. It's like, oh, yeah, bro. Went two 0 down. By the time I got home, check the results. See, Barney won three two. I was like, whoa! Like, and that's what a pro- that's that's a proper team. That's a proper team, you know. Never say die attitude. Never say die attitude. You got Collins, Kabamba just chipping in with their goals, doing what they do, you know, and being called upon when necessary. You know what I mean? And Barney. Uh, they're a very respected team. They've earned their respect in this division. I think a lot of teams respect them now. I know what they're about, in it? And they're expected to go to places like Dorkin. No disrespect to Dorkin, but expected to go to places like there and, and pick up three points. And everyone knows that there's no doubt that they're not going to be up there this season as well. So it's just a big result. And it's a result that also just people are looking at and like, these guys, they, they don't throw the towel. They're not throwing the towel. So I think on all levels, it's an incredible result because not only... It's, yeah, it's about winning games, but you see the manner in um, the way you win games sometimes, it, it it tells a lot about the character of a team, you know? And yesterday is a is a telling moment. It, it, it could be in some ways a defining moment. Like, yeah, we did. Like, do you know what I mean? This is that that's gonna be like um a catalyst to why maybe they'll crack on, you know, yeah. getting two more done and getting the result away from home. So yeah, credit to them. How about you, Dipper? What what, sh- what have you seen from from Barnet? Yeah, Barnet's the best team that I've played against so far this season, as in like a whole from the way they play, the managers on them, the way they want to pass the ball. Balls in behind, stretch. They they play. Their wing backs are quick, powerful. Um, and then, like I said, they got Nicky up top, who's just another goal machine in this league. So yeah, they'll do well this year. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, if they keep it up, they'll do well this year, hundred percent. I think momentum's a big thing. It seemed like they got that belief in themselves that it's not over until the whistle's gone. Yeah, so it's not a surprise that they did come back. I think Dawkins last season maybe leaking goals was their issue. I thought they had uh, they had wrote those wrongs right, but they they seem to have fell back into their ways yesterday. But that's football at the end of the day. It's it's, it's never easy, especially when the team's got that momentum. And I think that's a, a perfect time to go into um, our advice for younger players. Dippo, you've had the kind of career similar to myself where we've had to go up to go down and to go back up again. Yeah. So what would you what would you say to I'm gonna steal Femi's question, what would you say to a younger version of yourself in terms of how to get the best out of your potential? I think now that like I'm where I am, I'd probably say just put put everything you can into 
your craft and and if it doesn't go well then say at least i tried that like, at least i did everything i could to that i put i put everything into the game and i have no regrets because like if i'd come away from from football now i'd look at myself and i'd be like i have all the attributes and all the um the you know the people say the physique, the power, the pace. Like these are things some people dream for. To come away from football and, and to say that I didn't really put my effort into it. I think that's something that would eat away from me for the rest of my life. So I, I the one thing I would say, put, just sacrifice. You just sacrifice yourself to your craft and your career. And and let the rest do do, do its work. I mean, it you can't you can't promise where you'll be or you know what manager might be there or what teams you're gonna be in. But the one thing you can always promise yourself is that you put everything into your cross. I can't lie to you. Your story's been your story's crazy, and for some reason, I get a feeling that you're not done. No, I, I, I get that feeling that I, I, I can sense there's a hunger in you. you know, I can sense there's a desire in you to do well. And if I'm being honest, I, I feel like you need to run with that. You need to run with that and you need to hold on to that. You know? I know you're getting money now, my bro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't let that money get you comfortable, bro. Like, you know, just... You know, you know what's mad, yeah? Huh? You know what's mad? Last year, last calendar year, I said this, I put this in my tweet there, but like a few months ago when I joined here, I was riding on my pedal bike, delivering MACDs to people at 10 a.m. in the morning while I was at Welling. I was doing delivery, and now I'm in a position where I can actually like invest in myself and and my health and everything. Like That's why I say to people, like, your story should you're in charge of your own life like your, your story shouldn't just end you, you can't just be happy with the situation you're in i mean like and obviously like i'm in a better position than i am now but it's it's not enough it's not enough I could, it's enough when i can retire and i can put my feet up and not worry about anything that's when i'll say it's enough until then it's not enough. oh yeah and you know what yeah um these are the stories that me and jamal love you know, like literally from nothing to something. Like I was working in a telephone call center mm. whilst I played football. You know, and it, I think I think I think it's us knowing us knowing what we want to do, but us being in a situation that we don't want to be in. Yeah. I think it fuels you differently. If that makes sense. It's like you you're seeing. Everyone playing football, this is what you want. Saturdays at three o'clock kickoffs. But you're here. It it gives you it gives you and you stay hungry and it just sticks with you. I feel like from a lot of people that I speak to, like the likes of yourself, Mendy, um, Jamal, the the, the the stories are similar in the sense of that, and that's why there's that hunger. But what I was gonna ask is you see, during like obviously, it took it took it took a while for you to get to to where you're at now, isn't it? You yeah. had to you had to do a lot. Was there any dark days, any moments of doubt? And if there was, how did you manage to navigate through that? Um, I mean, the dark. I think the darkest moments for me was probably. I mean, the darkest moments probably that period between. The, that willing willing season is probably the darkest point. Just to just to know that, you know, is what I'm doing enough. Yeah, you know I mean, like, even though I'm putting everything like this, will I get the move? You know I mean, like, sometimes I've known some. There's people that have been in our league that have scored goals countless. I've always sat afar, watched people get moves. You know, watch people push on, not even do the numbers that I've done. But the worst thing you could do is sit down and sulk about, oh, this guy's got a move. Like, why am I not getting a move? Like, just have to get on and, and crack on with it. 
and then your chance will, will come up. And then when that chance comes, bang, take it. That is it. Like even when like when I went up to air, the first four games in like they have these little cup games before the season starts. No goals, not even a sniff. Do you know what I mean? Like I was hitting the post. Like keepers were saving stuff, saving off the line, and I was thinking, Can I run dry. <laughs> like, I just got here and then all of a sudden like I can't score but I, I always like the one thing I've always said to people is when I score one and my tail goes up everyone's in trouble you know I mean the confidence all I need is one goal so the devil's in trouble I said everyone's in trouble in everyone's my head in yeah, yeah. I said, everyone's in trouble I always say like I just need one let me get one and I start going, whether we're losing, we're drawing or we're winning. I need to be scoring. That that is that's always how I've been. And I, I would that's just how I've always been. One and then I'll score in bunches. That's how it comes. Hey, I can't wait to play against you, you know. I'm gonna say you and you and Le Lenel John Lewis. I can't wait to 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 we played the other day. Um I'm, I'm saying this now, like I don't I even be careful. Hey, 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 hey. Dipper, be careful. Be careful what you're about to say, you know. After Femi just said that. Be no, careful what you're about to say, you know. No, what I'm about to say is this is this is like this is me personally. Like we started this with, with if if you think about when I look about my preseason, I didn't have a proper preseason this season. And I'm I'm still probably working on my fitness. So wait till January. <laughs> He said he's not even ruined yet. He said he's not ruined yet. <laughs> Wait till when, he, when, he, when he comes against us again, when you, gonna, when you're, gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, I'm, I'm saying it now. This is I, never. I, I understood gonna, what you said. I, I understood. What you said. know what I mean? I got it. I got it. When, when everything's, when we start like even, and and on top of that, with, with like, you see, if we start winning games as well, so that's another boost. Do you know what I mean like scoring goals is nice? You know, this is that's a personal. When you have a team boost. It's different. <clears throat> For sure. And do you know what? It's so crazy because when I was at Welling, I was working at Fitness First as well. And I love the fact that you told that story about working at working for Deliveroo. I'm glad they didn't meet in with the COVID season because that 106 might have gone to, I don't know, your Ooh. weight <laughs> to even higher. But Femi, you said something there about your your you worked in the telephone company. Yeah. And the calls. Yeah, 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 of course. Can we, can, we hear your, can we hear your telephone voice and what you might have said, please? <laughs> Hello, my name is Fabulous. I'm William Paulin from GFK and OP. We're here to take a market research survey. Something like that. Something <laughs> along those lines, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. I bet, I bet you were picking up that phone and thinking, what am I doing here? Yeah, of course. Of course. You, see, you see, when you have that 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 first incident, you look around, you look at the people you're working with, you're thinking, I shouldn't be here. For sure. But do you know what it does? Do you know what it does, though, in the long run? And word to, this is word to Jacob Bendy. It keeps you humble, bro. I think it's true. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you know where you're coming from, innit? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You know what you've had to do. You see, like, you see when, you see when things don't come easy. You appreciate it more, innit? And oh, you cherish it, and it keeps you grounded. Uh, and I feel like that could have been the only way for me. When things come easy for man, for a lot of people, you can see they don't appreciate it. You can, you, you know what I mean? Like, so, so yeah, like in in that sense, man, it's just kept, it's kept man grounded. It's kept man humble. Those humble beginnings, you know. Like, I always, oh, always keep those days close to me. I mean, that's so true. And it's especially, especially when you're at work and you get to training, you think, I've got to make this happen. Yeah. It gives you that extra push. Like what I used to do is we used to train them all in that well in. I used to shoot off, not even shower, get in my car, quickly drive to Cannon Town Station, jump on the train into uh, London Bridge, quickly shower in the changing rooms, come out, put my name tag on and try and sell memberships. 
And do, do, do you know what's crazy about your one jam, yeah? That way, fam, that was that was so that was so of a culture shock to me because I had been at York City. That's what I was gonna say. Yours came in the middle. Yeah, but it's not but what's even worse is I could have signed for Barnet. For what well, I should have signed for Barnet, but I was told to not, I was told to ask for a certain amount of money and they didn't offer it. So I said, okay, this is what I'd like. They said, yeah, go on holiday, come back. We'll uh, we'll have a contract for you when you come back from Jamaica. Martin Allen, never forget it. So I'll come back. My phone ain't rang the whole time I'm there. So That's I'm, the word. You know, you start, you start thinking, is my, you start checking your connection. Is, is my, have they cut my phone off? No. I call my, yeah, do you know, we've gone for a different option. They end up winning the league that year. So even that was a even that was a was a lesson in itself. But by God's grace, I signed for Rex in the next year. But yeah, it definitely gives you that that boost to get your head down. But sorry to cut you, Ben. What was you gonna say? Uh, like, just like what you said, like obviously, like your one happened in the middle. So like you had played X amount of games, you had been a professional, and then in your mid twenties, it's like oh, I've got to go and work. Like how was that? Because you probably thought you wasn't, you wasn't, you probably thought, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to do this no more. Do you know what I mean? Well, I definitely, when I won promotion of York, I definitely thought, this is easy. Because I was 21. I was like, I'm going to have about six of these. Like, <laughs> I'm going twice in one week. I'm going to do this every year. I ain't been back since, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 34. I've not been back since. Like, so in that time, it was, it was a sink or swim moment. So, Instead of getting down to myself thinking I should be here, I should be there, I used the gym to my advantage. So after my shift, halfway, instead of going to lunch break, I have a quick lunch and I'll be out in the gym. I made a little deal with one of the PTs. I said, look, I'll slide, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'll slide you the clients that I sign up if you give me free PT sessions. Mm. That was how I managed to separate myself from everyone else at wedding because I was quicker, I was stronger. And, it's, and as much as I wasn't playing full time, I was training like I was full time. So I had a different kind of regimen. He gave me a nutrition plan. It was tough, but again, it was it was a it was a case of how much how bad do you want it? Are you gonna let this one setback determine the rest of your career? Yeah. So yeah, it was um it was definitely a tough one. That that, that that sink or swim, I mean, there's so many people that I know that have that have sunk and that have been it's gotta be in you though, Dippo. It's gotta be in you. And that's, and that's why even this, uh, this situation that we're in with Vaughan Wood, I know what I'm made of. I know what Femi's made of. I know what a lot of people in that dressing room are made of. I know what the gaffer's made of. So I know that it's only a matter of time before we get into it, you know? Like, it's sink or swim right now, in my opinion, for yeah. us. And we're going to swim, you know? Like, we're going against the current right now, but we're going to swim. We're definitely going to swim. Um, <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's a great way to go into the word of the week. Because I'm on, because I'm here, and I've, I've just said it there. My word is motion. Simply because, let me explain word of the week quickly, just to the viewers and yourself who haven't done it before. We use word of the week as something to motivate us throughout the week, whether we're having a good time or a bad time. It's something that we can remember to keep us going. So my word is going to be motion, because the motion can never stop. It's when you stop is when you you fail. When you keep pedaling, when you keep making one step forward, when you keep jogging, no matter how slow you're going, as long as you're making those steps towards something, something better, that's what you've got to do. And that, and, that, and that motion is in terms of everything. So how are you training? How are you thinking? How are you living? Your motion can't stop. You can't be stagnant because that's the only time that you're going to fail and not, get, and not reach the ultimate goal. So that's the word I'm going to use this, this week in everything that I do. It's not even going to stop. So from analysis that we're going to do tomorrow, I'm going to look at it. The analysis that I'll do on my own self, I'm going to look at it and, and use that motion in myself. So I open the floor to you, Femi, and Dippo, and let's have your word. Yes, have you got a word? Time. Use your time wisely. Um, I say that because there's a lot of, there's a lot of time, like, before in my life where I've just used, not not used, but haven't dedicated enough time to working on your craft and, 
and using it correctly. But they always say if you, you dedicate a good to say an hour or two hours a day, you'll be better than someone next year. If you if you if you, you know, sacrifice at least an hour or two. So time. Use your time wisely. I like that one. Time. For me? Yeah, my word is um trust. There's 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 like I I like I like the conversation that we had today. I really like the back end of the conversation as well. There's there, there, there's there's moments that Hippo spoke on, there's moments that Jamal spoke on where you just have to trust yourself, trust the process, you know, and we're going through it at the moment. We are going through it at the moment, in it, but one thing about me personally is there's not one single doubt that it's not going to work out because I trust my process. I trust what I'm doing. You know, I, tr I trust it. I believe in it. I know what I'm doing. And, um, we know what we're doing in and around the building. And it's only a matter of time, you know, for, for where things will turn around, you know. Um, another, another thing also is why you got to trust what you're doing is because every year, Every year, and I've been meaning to say this, every year, whatever field you're in, there's a level up, whether that's football, whether that's that's whatever you're doing, there's always a level up, level up, and the standard required, it gets higher, isn't it, you know? The standard gets higher. Um, and why you've got to trust your process is because you have to also level up as well, you know, does that make sense? So the old 19... Femila Sanmi can't survive in 2023. So what am I doing to, to, to stay ahead of the pack or to stay relevant or to stay, do you know what I mean? To stay and and that's where you've got to trust, trust what you're doing, trust your process, you know, whatever you're doing to make sure that you're you're maintaining and you're thriving, you know, that makes sense. So yeah, my word of the week this week is gonna be trust. I love that. So time, motion, and trust. I think those are some great words. And they can definitely help. They're definitely going to help me, for sure. I'm going to use every single one. I think, I, I agree with you, Femi. It's been an amazing conversation. And one that I think will definitely live long in the memory, simply because of the stories that we're told, you know. like There's so many things you've got to do to succeed and it ain't always going to be rosy it's not always going to be a straight line you know we spoke to mendy last last week and he was a, a waiter waiting tables and look at him now it's just because he believed and he trusted the process you know so so yeah Pam, you got anything else you want to want to share want to say yes i'm not gonna lie yeah hey i'm glad i finally met you you know <laughs> you're, you're a proper still oh thanks for Oh, no, you're proper, you're proper. I'm glad I finally met you. Man. So, yeah. Yeah, man. It's Thank good you. to meet you guys both. Like. Oh, likewise. Likewise. And I've heard I've heard good things. I've spoke to Scotty. I've spoke to um Paddy. And they've had they've had lovely things to say about you and, and they didn't lie. So thank you for coming on and blessing us with your time. Yeah. I wish you know what's you actually crazy now I remember. What? I remember I think I'd finished it was the season I'd done what at Dulwich. Yeah. I remember messaging Luke. And I think it's when just before who came in. Who's the striker that went Peter Bergen? Shimango. Shimango, that's it. I think you guys lost the striker. And I messaged him and I was like, you guys are looking for like a forward? He's like, yeah, if this one doesn't come through then we'll be into it. And then I saw Shibango went through, I said, oh, that makes sense. That makes oh, sense. So so he he took the cabs instead of yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think he obviously they're the ready. I think he's probably been already been speaking to cabs at the time. So no, that would have been a that would have been a frightening partnership, to be honest. Crazy frightening partnership. Yeah. But yeah, no, I still, <laughs> definitely tell Luke I said hello because you know I've always bumped into him. I mean, from young he's probably seen my growth anyway, so he'll tell you. He speak highly of you when when we watch the the video, so I'll definitely I'll definitely pass that message on. But a funny story from Cabs. Femi tells it the best. The first day we met Cabs, 
Femi, tell that story when um, we was in the first day of preseason. So, so um, first day of preseason, like everyone's come, everyone's come, we've gone in a meeting and whatnot, and um, managers having a meeting, like, yeah, this is the plan for preseason, this is that. I just want to welcome the new signings, want to welcome this guy, want to welcome. Wanna welcome. I can't remember who we signed that summer, yeah. Then he's gone, oh, I want to welcome Cavs. Yeah, Cavs was at Oxford last year. He scored 32 goals last year. And now he's joined us. Cavs has gone. No. <laughs> so it's, everyone's like, like, remember, it's the first day we've seen everyone. So everyone's turned around. Like, like the first word they put, I'm like. <laughs> like this, like. Then he's gone, I scored 36 goals. <laughs> <laughs> from there we knew from that moment we knew <laughs> this one is different <laughs> but it's day one the first meeting huh? don't, don't mess them out with a man's stats <laughs> <laughs> oh dude she can relate to that one <laughs> that's one of the funniest that's one of the funniest stories <laughs> We were all like this. We were locked in. We were locked in. You see what I, you see what I, you see what I, when I see people, oh, yeah, no, nah, he's got this many and this. I'm thinking, mate, you're like free short, bro. What are you talking about? Like? Hey, did, hey, did Jamal get your stats right? He got it right. He got it right. He got it right. I, got really, right. Really, I made sure. I didn't I didn't just use one source, you know. I went on <laughs> three different acts to see well, how many goals, how many assists, how many games? And then, even then, I still asked him. Did yeah, I yeah. is that right? Is that right? <laughs> I saw them during the week, yeah. I saw them during the week, yeah. But then you added one yesterday. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there was that. something going around. There was something going around with your stats. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was seven goals, six assists, and obviously yeah. I scored. Yeah, so, but you added you added one yesterday in it, and it was like, okay, yeah, Jamal got that one in. <laughs> that is, so what it is? That was quite at the beginning of the of this podcast. And I thought, you know what? Let me not get his back up by getting it wrong so early on. I want him nice and calm. I want him to enjoy himself. I don't want him thinking these guys don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah. So now we know, though. At least we know now. Never play with a striker's stats. Right. No, never play with it. What I will say is, it's been an amazing conversation. Thank you, for your, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your ideas and your story. Um, it's been a pleasure, honestly. Guys, please like, subscribe, share, man. Show a friend. Let's post the show as much as we can. But um, dips, yeah, man. Like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you, bro. I think, boys, been good. <laughs>